there's a wasp in there. What size is that? Now I think it only has a plug, very simple. Let's see how I get this one off without breaking anything. Oops, just broke that. That actually didn't help at all. I thought BMWs were easy. Hey guys, it's good to see you. Welcome to a new video. Today it's finally time to start taking the BMW apart. The main reason for this video is that I want to take all the parts away that are not going to be in the final build. Afterwards, we'll be able to see how the basic bike looks and um, yeah, start from there. All right, so first, tank off. The good thing is that I don't actually need to keep any of this. I'm gonna try to take it apart as if I would use it again, but. Okay, first let's take off the rear fender. Look at this. BMW has an air pump. That is so nice. Okay, still connected in the back. Oops. All right, let me quickly put something over the exhaust so I don't scratch it. Ah, no, it's still connected to the other side. Does it come off now? Maybe with some force. So let's unscrew that one. Okay, I still need to figure out how to take the seat off. Put those back on just to keep them secured. Okay, so next I'm going to take the seat off. This is actually fairly simple. It just has a little like clip system here to secure it. So you can just pull off and then you can slide it off. Now, the only thing that holds the rear fender in place are those cables, so let's get rid of them. Now, I think it only has a plug right here. Very simple. Let's see how I get this one off without breaking anything. Cool. All right. So far so good, um, all the junk in the back is gone. It actually looks pretty nice. If you trim something off in Germany that it's very hard to register it again. So I might just go with a stock frame. Battery box. There goes number two. There we go. So it's not only the mount for the front fender, but also a stabilizer for the fork. And with these models, it's very important to keep some kind of stabilizer um, in here. I need to figure out if I want to keep this um, since it fits. It's not too bad, but it's also not beautiful. All right, let's continue with all of these big pieces. So indicators, lamp, speedometer. I actually need to see how these come off, um, these mounts, because they are underneath the upper um, fork clamp, but they don't look too complicated, so that should be fine. Also, the indicators are like pushed onto the fork and then secured by these brackets, so I might actually have to take all of this apart. I'm gonna start with the speedometer first. All right, there goes this. Okay, so this becomes part of the whole. What size is that? OK, 
Okay. Okay, let's see if I get that out just like this. So with most motorcycles, one part of the cables is in here um, from all the electronic that's going on in the front. So I might need to open this and then take it out so that I can disconnect everything. Oops, just broke that. Ah, there we go. This crew is connected to the little metal thing that holds this ring onto the lamp. Number three. I guess I won't get this one off unless I take all the cables out. Yeah, let's deal with that one later. Procrastination at its finest. This is super helpful to get your grips off. There we go but that actually didn't help at all. So this one is also just pinched in. Push this one forward and then you can take this one out. I got the clutch cable unhooked. I should have probably done that before. Now we can take off this little piece and then screw out the whole clutch cable. Uh oh That's gone. All right, so I've got the controls off. I like basically just unscrewed the speedometer, the headlight. Um, what I now need to do is first uh, figure out how I can get the top four clamp off and then I need to um, take out the I think I need to take out basically all of the cables so I can take off uh, the light and the speedometer which are all connected so and then it actually already looks pretty nice I think so simple but well I guess taking it apart is always simple putting it back together is Okay, so this is the biggest nut I have. It is a 32 millimeter, but it doesn't fit on here. Um, I think this is 36. I quickly measure. Yeah, so this is 36, and I guess I need that to take off these. All right, guys, that's it for today. Um, I unfortunately don't have the 36 millimeter nut or any other tool that would open these. So I need to order those um, and then I can disassemble all of this. Um, so yeah, that's it for today. But over the weekend, I have ordered this 36 millimeter Proxon nut so that today I can unscrew these. And then with that, um, I should be able to take off all of the front bits and then also the wiring harness. Um, so yeah. Let's jump straight into it and see how far we get. 
let's see what's underneath here. Um, and I think that the big one won't open the fork, I hope. I guess I should download the manual, but anyways, we'll just go for it. Okay, they are pretty long. Okay, so yes, they open the forks. Shit. Um, but how am I supposed to get these off? I mean, like, I might actually just leave those on there, untighten all of this. Okay, this is actually more than I thought it would be. Seems like I need to take off this hot screw, um, which basically holds the uh, steering hat bearing. I thought BMWs were easy, aren't they? This seems a little complicated. Let's see which size, I guess 36, right? We have some all the way up to 32. No, shit. Oh, damn it. And this one can't be taken off either. Fuck. Um, damn it. Okay, so probably I need to wait. So seems like I need to order a 36 millimeter um, wrench. I thought with a nut I would be fine, but I can't take this off. This changes something with the steering, I don't know. Like down here, um, there's something like, it looks like a pressure cylinder, something like that. And you can change it like to the left or the right. I don't know what that is all about. It looks like I can't take this off. So I also can't take these off. Um, what I might do is just go ahead and kind of unwire all this uh, stuff. Oh no, most of this is also new to me. Right, clutch cable out. So this is the speedometer cable. I mean, look at that. This does not look anything new. So I'm gonna take that off and then take that out. I don't know how to take this off, but I guess somewhat like that. This is just old. Right, there we go. And then this, how does that come out? I guess that's a task for another day. Okay, well, since that didn't really work, let's start with something simpler. Okay, so I lost you for a minute. I don't know where it stopped. Now I'm thinking what else I can take off. I mean, in the end, it has to come off anyway, so we might as well start now. So let's see how we can get this out. For the most part, I actually don't know what I'm taking off here, but I guess I just figured that out later. Right, there we go. All right, so I guess I call it the day. I need to order the 36 millimeter wrench um, to get the top hot screw off and then... Look what I've brought you. While I was looking back at the footage from the past two days, I figured out that I need to get some lights. So I not only got one for us, but I got two and some mounts. And I hope that way you'll be able to see more uh, of what's going on. I also got the 36 millimeter wrench um, for the top screw that holds the four clamps. So I hope today we'll be able to get all that off, uh, take the speedometer, the lamp, and the whole wiring harness out. So let's jump straight into it. I guess I got the worst spot in the whole garage. Now nah, I'm not sure. Every time I come back, everything is so dirty. I mean, it's crazy, but I don't know. I guess I have to live with it. Alright, day three. As you know, 
I have the 36 millimeter wrench to get this off, hopefully. But one thing that gives me kind of anxieties is this. There is something that adjusts the steering, I guess. So if any one of you knows what this is for, um, let me know in the comments below. I've never seen anything like this before on a motorcycle and I don't know how to get it off. But that's what we aim for today. Then we can clean up the whole mess I made. So yeah, let's just get started and see where we end up. Taking the top screw off doesn't really work. Um, it just bumps into this one. So now I'm thinking that I first take off this whole steering thing at the bottom and then maybe there's like a tube or something inside that I then can pull out. Oh, see, that was fairly simple. So this is the bottom part. And then this is the nut that holds it on the other side. So on the bottom there's like the counterpart, just like a little sprocket. I don't know, it doesn't really look like I could just pull it out through the top. Um, I guess I need to consult the manual. I mean, what I don't understand is, do you really always have to take out the forks and the fork clamps just in order to get to the indicators? I mean, that would be kind of stupid. Sorry, BMW. But I can't actually really imagine that this is the case. So I think I'm making a mistake and I'm overlooking something or whatever. So we'll check. All right, I figured it out what it is. Reduce the shocks that you get from steering. So the manual says that you are able to take off the top screw. So maybe this is the top screw is broken or I've just like completely overlooked that. So let's go and check. All right, I mean, for me, it looks like round. Nice. If I only had seen that this is an inverse before. That was easy. So this is all it is. Just a stick, then the sprocket. I could not have believed that BMW would have constructed something that it wouldn't be easy to disassemble. Because if you remember in the video where I presented the bike, um, you can check that out, I'll link it somewhere. I said that it is super easy to work on this bike, supposed to be super easy. So yeah, let's continue. Okay, so I think I figured it out. Um, there are safety pins that hold the little ball in its place basically, like uh, the joint. So this is weird. But anyways, once that's off, if I get it off, then that should come out quite easily. There we go. Sometimes the look in the manual isn't too harmful, I guess. Uh, super happy that it's out now. Wasn't too bad actually. Um, once I figured out how to get it off, uh, it was only a few screws, nothing too complicated, thanks BMW. Now we can continue with all of this. Finally, I mean, it took long enough. Let's see how it continues. So both indicator cables run into uh, the lamp. I thought I could just like pull it off this way. Or maybe I can. One. Two. <laughs> Guess it doesn't make it any better. Do you think it is stupid if I unplug all of these cables now? Tricky. The thing is, it all runs through this tight space. I won't be able to get it all through there. So this way would work maybe. I'm also getting very hungry. Oh 
nice. I guess I can take off this. There's another plug that goes into the engine. All right, let me squeeze in here so I can show you what we do next. Um, next, we need to take out these two cables that run into the engine. So I've just checked the manual, but I couldn't really find how to get this cable out. I don't want to waste any more time, so I'm just going to cut open the wiring harness and then take out all of this. And I'm going to deal with that once the engine is out. Let's see how it goes. Yes, finally, nice, feels so good. I hope I never need that again, because I have no clue which cable goes where. So a few things that I need to look up. Uh, how I get the speedometer transmission cable out. I need to check how I get the cables out. And apart from that, I guess um, we're pretty good to go. Just a quick update. I did not know how to get this speedometer cable out. But actually it was super simple. I just wanted to quickly unscrew the battery cable. And once that was out, I also could take off this. With that being out, um, most of the other cables I don't want to take out right now. So I think I'm done with this yeah, line preparation basically. Three days and two new tools later, Finally, the BMW is taken apart. For some reason, I messed up the audio here in the end, so don't mind me talking in the video. If you like this video, you'll also enjoy my last one, where I explained why the BMW R series is such a good basis for a custom bike project. And you can be especially excited for next week's video, where we're going to unpack all the new BMW parts that have arrived. And I can assure you there are some very special ones. I am looking forward to that and if you want to become part of this awesome build then hit the subscribe button and the bell next to it so you get notified whenever I post a new video, mostly Fridays. Thank you so much for watching and I'll see you in the next one.